Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll cover the new drone that's being developed by Sony called AirPeak. Now, if you've never heard of this drone before, <laughs> that's not surprising because there's very little information out there about the product. And apparently it's been under development for quite some time over at Sony, but it's like this double secret project that's buried in their labs and they've done a great job of keeping a lid on all the leaks and rumors and pictures. Now, when I first heard about it, I started my research and what I normally do is look at the FCC site, I check the patent and trademark sites, and I'm looking for any kind of technology that might be related to a drone, and I came up empty. So the next thing I do is start speed dialing all my contacts in the business saying, hey, uh, have you guys heard anything about this brand new drone from Sony? And I got back crickets. Nobody knows anything. So I'm constantly scouring the web, and lo and behold, a couple of months ago, two things happened. Number one, Sony put out about a 15 second teaser clip, which basically just showed a rotor spinning with its kind of green, scary illumination behind it. And that was it, nothing, just air peak, that's it. So I thought, okay, they're getting close to release and they're teasing us with what this technology is gonna look like. But about the same time, the patent application showed up on the web. So I grabbed it and it's really dense. It's got a lot of information in there and you gotta read through it. And I've been pouring over it over the last couple of weeks because we've been off for the holidays. And I'm gonna give you my impressions of what I think this drone's gonna look like. Now, for starters, I initially thought, What's Sony doing diving into the drone business? You have monster companies like DJI and Autel and Parrot and a bunch of others, Skydio, that are monsters in the space and they've mastered the craft of building a drone and they're so far ahead, they're in their fifth generation in some cases of products. That's a market that's really hard to penetrate. You would almost have to have a craft that was invisible at that point to do something amazing. But don't bet against Sony because as a company, they're like a monster in development. They've got labs that work on things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, facial recognition. They've got some of the best imaging systems on the planet so they've got all the bits and pieces of building a drone and to be fair getting that camera up in the air is not that complicated anymore you can buy off the shelf components cobble them together and build a drone that flies pretty well in a couple of hours so building a drone to enter that market had to be different and one thing i've learned about sony i've been in consumer electronics my entire life and i can tell you that if all the other companies go right Sony goes left from a development perspective. They're always different, they're unique. Something different about that product and that's exactly what they're doing with this drone. So I don't wanna keep calling it a drone because after all the research I've done on it, it isn't a drone. It's a flying imaging platform. And I know that sounds like a small distinction between the two, but it's essentially a flying camera. It's a camera that just happens to fly and they've taken all the piloting skills out of it. From everything I can see in the patent application, this drone is something that you would program lift off your hand and let it do the magic. So you're not really flying it like you would a normal drone. So all the folks out there like me that fly a lot of these FPV drones or camera drones where you've got joysticks and you're flying it around trying to get the perfect shot, that's not what they're building. So essentially what you're gonna get, and I'm gonna show you some diagrams here from the patent application. When I first saw it, it's a square, it's sort of a rectangle. And I looked at it and thought, that is a weird looking drone. And if you look at it closer, what happens is it's like a clamshell design where the top pops off and the drone's underneath. And that top, when it pops off, is an LCD screen. It's basically the controller. So when you pop that off, I'm sure the thing spins up, or I should say it, the electronics spin up, where the display comes on and the drone will fold out. It looks like four different rotors. Now, there were two diagrams in there. There's one that shows four rotors and one that shows eight rotors. I don't think the eight rotor model is ever gonna hit the market. The four rotor model is the one that I think you're gonna see. But here's the interesting thing. Once those rotors pop out, that display becomes live and then you do everything from the display. So I imagine what you're gonna do is some type of facial recognition, there'll be autonomous flight patterns built into it. It looks like you can control it somewhat to change the perspective of the camera, how far away from you it is, how close it is to you. And again, I mentioned before that Sony is huge in artificial intelligent, autonomous things, flight characteristics like this are right in their bailiwick. So if you think about Sony too, They've done a ton of things before in robotics. Like years gone by, they built that robotic dog, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago called Ibo, which was kind of a crude dog, but it was kind of interesting because it did some clever things. And then they shut that program down and then I guess started it up again a couple of months back or a year back. And now they've got a dog that's creepy looking. I mean, it looks just like a regular dog, a tail's wagon. It's got LEDs and the lights that are blinking and smiling at you and stuff. So I wouldn't put it past Sony to come up with some pretty amazing gear, but to put it in perspective, it's not gonna be a competitor to the traditional DJI, Autel Robotics, and all the rest of them, where you're flying this thing five miles and you're trying to get shots of a forest. It's really personal 
uh, photos and videos where I think they're trying to make it incredibly simple for somebody just to take this thing out of your pocket, pull the controller top off, tell it, I want to get a picture of myself and my family, let it go, it flies back to 15 feet away from you and captures you in the landscape behind. Maybe it does a 360, maybe it does a flyaway or it does a straight up, all the stuff you've come to expect from drones today. But what I like about it, and again, the unique part that Sony's bringing to this is nobody's really doing that today. All the drones that are out there today from the big manufacturers are drones. And okay, they fold up small, you gotta unfold them. You gotta spin them up. You gotta connect the controller. You gotta take your phone and connect it up. You gotta get it up in the air. Then you gotta say to everybody, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna get the picture. Hold on, stay right where you are. Now, some of them are quicker than others, but it's still a drone that you're trying to force into that flying camera model. This is a flying camera. It looks like Sony just said, we can do so much with terrestrial cameras. Wouldn't it be cool if we could get 30 feet up in the air or 100 feet up in the air to get that landscape shot of the, of the people at the picnic? Um, we can build that. So what they're going for, I think, with this AirPeak product is truly a flying camera, and I wouldn't discount them. Now, some other things to note about this, uh, it doesn't have a gimbal. So from what I can tell from the diagrams, and again, they purposely make these patent uh, documents vague because they want to protect their intellectual property, but they don't want to give too much away. So from the diagram, it looks like a fixed camera. That's not that surprising because they can handle image stabilization, electronic image stabilization, which would keep that picture solid. Uh, the best I've ever seen in electronic image stabilization, in drones anyway, has to be Parrot. When they came out with that Parrot Bebop 2, I just couldn't get over the fact that I could put it up in the air and have it buffet it by the wind and it would keep that picture rock solid. So I'm sure Sony's got that figured out as well. I have no specifications yet on resolution. I'm assuming it's gonna be a 4K. It's gonna have a lot of pixels. I'm sure it's gonna do a great job because its whole point is to take pictures and videos of whatever you're, you're trying to capture yourself and your friends. But I think the market they're going for is probably younger flyers, inexperienced flyers. They've made it incredibly safe so the propellers are not exposed. They're inside of uh, propeller guards that actually pop out to protect you. So I could see you launching it from your hand, having it land on your hand and take it from there. Now let me just read some of the logic behind it because this kind of gives you an insight into exactly how it flies because they didn't go into any detail about the programming that's built into it. But let me just read this for you because again, as an engineer, I love these kind of logic diagrams. So uh, I'm looking at the one that's on the screen right now. So from the user perspective, you're gonna set a formation. And I imagine what they mean by that, and I'm interpreting here, is that the formation is, what kind of shot do I want? Do I want a selfie? Do I want to fly away? Do I want the straight up? Do I want it to circle me? Once you set that formation, it's gonna, I imagine it's gonna take off. Uh, it's gonna store formation in the actual controller, and then it's gonna create the facial recognition dictionary, which I think is interesting. So that may mean that they're, they're gonna keep track of you and people that you constantly get pictures with. So if you're going out with a bunch of friends, maybe they're gonna take your face and her face and his face and keep track of that inside the unit so you don't have to learn it every time. That's pretty cool. But then it takes off. Now it's all under the imaging system control. It takes off, it performs position control so that the position of the face is included. So basically what they're doing is they're having the drone through artificial intelligence frame that shot of you and your friends standing there in front of the lake, which is pretty cool. It's gonna then image it, so it's gonna take the video or picture, then it's gonna perform position control so that the face is definitely within that frame. So it's not only setting up the shot, but it's making sure you're in the picture and your friends are in the picture to give you that exact shot you're looking for. Once it's done, it's gonna land, and now it's saying from the user perspective, stretch out your hand. So they're telling you that it's not gonna be a land it on the ground, take off with joysticks, fly at six miles, get a shot of the forest. It's gonna be close to you. It's probably gonna be Wi-Fi based. So I think it's a pretty cool product. But anyway, that's Sony. That's all I have right now. Now I tell you, I've actually reached out to the development team, trying to get some information from them. I got nothing back. I'm still gonna try. I talked to the product management team. I sent them emails trying to get some details. I'm trying to get a test unit so that I can actually review it for you here on the channel and show you exactly what the product's capable of. I don't know if that'll happen or not, but I'll keep trying for sure. But anyway, that's all I've got right now. So when you hear AirPeak, don't think, oh my gosh, DJI's got a competitor. They kind of do in that camera space. But again, it all comes down to how expensive is it? How good does it fly? Because we've seen companies enter this market before that came and went pretty quickly, but I wouldn't bet against Sony. They're a monster company with a ton of different development labs and they will not release a product unless it's functional and it's fantastic. So I have every faith that this is gonna be a pretty cool product. Anyway, that's all I really had for today. So if you have any questions, drop those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Again, there's a lot more detail in that patent application than I can possibly get through in a 10 minute clip. But um, if you've got questions, let me know and I'll answer them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I say this every time, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Hit that button down there and join the Drone Valley family because I have a ton more clips coming on really cool drone stuff and a whole lot of other high-tech equipment. 
that we're reviewing on the channel. So you'll definitely want to get in on that. Plus, we get a ton of giveaways coming up. So you'll want to get here for those. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, <laughs> happy flying.